Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the fifth video of the SwiftUI to-do app series, where we're building a to-do app from scratch in SwiftUI, and then refactoring it to use the Combine framework. In this video, we'll continue our transformation to Combine by looking at the Just Publisher, and also adding a sync subscriber to our properties that are decorated with the at publish property wrapper. I recommend that you watch the previous videos in this series, but if you're just starting here, you can download the completed project from the last video from the link in the description below. If you enjoy this series, please give the videos a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to get notified when new videos are released. I encourage you to leave a comment below. And if you're so inclined, you can support my work by buying me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the notes below. Links to all of the videos in the series are also in the description below. Now I've already mentioned that properties marked with the app Publish Property Wrapper are publishers. And it's a special one that has been created for SwiftUI using the app Publish Property Wrapper. And Todos is actually a publisher and it's kind of like what's called a current value subject publisher that we'll cover in the next video. I say not quite and we'll get to that later. What it does have in common with a current value subject and what is different from a pass-through subject is that it already has some value. It remembers the current state. We don't have to pass in any values, nor do we have to send it any to call an update. It is constantly watching for changes and all we have to do is subscribe to those changes and do what we need when it gets any changes, like save for example. So we can replace our save function. Todos being a publisher has received a value and that value is an array of todos. Initially that's an empty array, but when we load in and decode our JSON or update the array, the value of our publisher is updated. And each time it updates, we want to write it back to our file in the documents folder. And this is the same action as the save function. Now, since we can have our publishers react to changes, we can replace our save to do's function with a subscription on the published value. So in our add subscriptions function, let's start with our to do's publisher. And we'll specify the, the publisher rather than the content by prefacing our variable with a dollar sign. Now we're going to subscribe to that publisher, but on a background queue, and then make sure that we receive it on the main queue so that we can update our UI. With combine, we can now operate on those objects and pass it on down the pipeline. And one of those things we want to do is to encode the data that it receives. And that requires an encoder. So we'll use a JSON encoder. Now, once our data has been encoded, it's optional. So we can filter out any optionals using the try map function for combine. So what we're left with is a non-optional data that we can now try to write to our file manager's documents directory, passing along the name as the appending path component. Now, as you will recall, there may be a decoding error, so we'll have to deal with that. Now, we can attach the .sync subscriber, and you see that we have this really ugly signature. Basically, it's two parts. It's a completion and a receive value. The argument for the completion is the combination of the subscription, which tries to encode and write to our documents directory. And this can either be completed successfully with no errors or it can fail. The argument then is a completion then that has two states. Either it finishes successfully or it produces an error and we can deal with that. We don't get any receive value so we'll just use an underscore here and we'll enter something here in the code that will let us know that we've actually done the receiving. In the completion block, then, we can switch on completion. It will either be finished or failure with an error, as I mentioned. So let's switch on that and deal with the error in particular. But first, 
if the case is dot finished, we can simply print out a statement that saving was completed. In the case of a failure, let's assign that error to an error variable. Now we know from one of our previous videos that when saving, we can get two kinds of errors, one from encoding and one that results from our file manager extension, which is a to-do error. So let's deal with that first one. If the error is a to-do error, we can set our app error variable that will trigger our alert to an error type, passing in the error, but casting it as a to-do error. The other case is an encoding error, so let's just pass on the to-do errors encoding case to the error type. Now, since we're referencing app error, we'll need to make sure that I don't create a retain cycle, so we'll add an unowned self prior to our argument. For the receive value, we actually get nothing back, but let's just print out that we were successful. And finally, because we want to maintain this subscription, we store it in our subscription set. And this means then that we no longer need to have the save to do's function so we can remove it from our other subscriptions. Well, let's see if this works so far. Let's run it in the simulator and see what happens when we add a new to-do. If I stop and run again, we see that our to-do has been maintained. You'll notice, however, that when I run the app, I'm getting two printouts of saving was successful before I even do anything. Why is that? Well, think about it. When we create our to-dos property, we are assigning it an empty array. And then in our initializer, we're loading our to-dos which assigns the values from the stored file. So because we now subscribe to this publisher, the sync thinks we're making changes two times and responds accordingly. So we'll need to fix that and replace this load functions with another type of publisher. We're on the home stretch now. Only one more function to replace, and that is the load to do's function. This is something that happens just once. And I emphasize the word just because it's a publisher that immediately passes on a single value. And that value can't change, and we pass it on when we create the publisher. So we'll create that publisher using the same name as load to do's and assign it the just publisher. And as I said, it has one argument type, and that's its output. So what do we want to pass on down the pipeline and deal with it? Well, we want to pass on the URL for our file in our documents directory, which we know to be called the file name, and it's in our documents directory. So in our initializer, let's remove that call then to our loading, and then create a subscription to our just publisher. Let's add that subscriber in now to the top of our add subscriptions function. Now, before we do anything with this data, we can solve the problem for trying to access a file that does not yet exist by using a filter on our file manager's file exists method and pass in the path of the received URL, which we can specify as $0. Then we can use trimap to exclude any optionals when we try to extract the data from that URL. This means that if there's an error, the rest of this will not be processed. Once we have our data, we can decode it into an array of to-dos using the decoder of JSON decoder. Now that we have that published data filtered and processed, we can subscribe to what we've received and deal with it. Well, we will subscribe again on a background queue and receive it on the main queue. So I can copy that code from the to-dos publisher. Let's now use the sync operator, which provides me with two closures again, one that receives a completion, and the receive value will be our array of to-dos that I can call to-dos. As with our to-dos publisher subscription, the completion is an enum that is either finished 
or a failure. So we can switch on that. In the case of finished, we'll simply print out that we are subscribed to our load to dos publisher. In the case of a failure, we need to again check to see what kind of error we might receive. It will either be a decodable error due to this decoding, or it could be a file manager to do error. So calling the variable error, we'll check to see if it's a to do error. If so, we can assign it an error type passing in the error as a to do to our app error to trigger the alert. Else it must be a decoding error, so we'll pass in a to do error with the decoding error case. And we can fix these errors once again by capturing an own self in our closure. For the receive value, we are receiving our decoded array of to dos, which we have called to dos, and we can assign those to our classes to do property. And then, of course, we need to store this in our set of subscriptions. If I build this app now, I get an error because I haven't deleted my old load to dos function. So let's do that and run our app. When I run the app, I see in my console that I'm saving, loading, and saving again. As I explained before, we have to try and fix that. Let's try to add a new to do. It saves nicely. Perfect. So how do we fix this double saving of our data on load when I don't need to do any saving? Well, I can remove the saving of this initial assignment of the empty array by going to our to do subscription and tell it to ignore the first receipt from the publisher. And that's when we assigned it that empty array. And we can do that simply by telling to do's to drop the first value it receives. Running now, I see I only get one save, which is when we did the initializer and loaded in our array from our save file. So how can I ignore that? Well, the trick is not to create the subscription on to-dos until after we've loaded in the data. So I'm going to cut out this entire to-do subscription here and create a new function called to-do subscription. And now I'll paste it in here. So when do we want to subscribe? Well, we'll need to do that on two occasions. First is here in the finished case for our load to do sync. And the second place is if we get a decoding error. Remember, our localized description told us to create a new one. This will overwrite and save the file only if we have subscribed to to-dos. So we'll need to add it here. Let's run and test once more. Notice how there is no saving on loading, yet I'm getting my content displayed. Let's add a new to-do. It saves. Let's delete. And when we do, you'll see that our to-dos get saved. Fantastic. We're done. Let's just alter that JSON file and mess it up and see if our errors are working. Remember, we found that by going to our Applications Documents folder. So I'll open that file again in Xcode and invalidate the JSON and save. Running once more, we see our error gives us that alert and suggests that what we should do is create a new one. And when we do that, we can see that it's been saved OK. Well, we've come a long way. We've used three different publishers, the pass-through subject, the just publisher, and the Swift UI publisher that's obtained by using the app publish property wrapper. In the final video of this series, I'm going to be replacing our app publish properties with another combined publisher called the current value subject.